Comparing fractions. We have three different strategies for comparing fractions. So we're going to compare the fraction to six. Here's my number line. I find the fraction to six. So everything is going to be compared to this number to six, where it is on the number line. So I'm going to compare if they have common denominators. So just a reminder, in a fraction, the one on the top is the numerator, how many we have over the total, the denominator, how many pieces makes the whole. So if I'm comparing two six versus four six, that's the easiest way, that's a common denominator, meaning that the numbers on the bottom are the same, which means that the pieces in our holes are the same. So we can build two holes. And we want to make sure that they are relatively the same size, or at least the same length. And since there's six, I need to make sure that the lines are in the exact same place. Six is an even number. I start by putting the line in the middle. Three on this side, so two lines, makes three pieces. I'm going to have the lines in the exact same place. And now I have a total of six pieces. So we're going to compare two six to four six. And two is how many I have highlighted, or how many I have out of the six total. And then four, one, two, three, four. So clearly, when it's common denominators, all it is is comparing the numerators. So Looking at two and four, what is the larger number? Well, four is the larger number, so I always want to eat the larger number. So the alligator eats the four. So this would be two is less than four, or two six is less than four six. So when it's a common denominator, all we have to do is look at the numerator. And we know which one is larger. We can find 4, 6 on our number line, and clearly 2, 6 would be less than 4, 6. Another thing that we can use is if the numerators are the same, or so that the number on the top is the same. So if the number on the top is the same, then really we're just concerned about the size of the piece. So this is the sixth size. And this is the tenth size, meaning that we've taken our hole and we've broken it into six equal pieces and I've broken it into ten equal pieces. So I'm going to again draw two holes relatively the same size so that I can compare them. I need, since they are both even, I can draw a line in the middle and they need to be at the exact same place. The top one is going to represent two, six. So I'm going to make three pieces on this side, three pieces on this side by drawing two lines equally spaced apart, or as much as I can make them equally spaced. And then for tenths though, I need five and five. So four lines, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Trying to make them as equally spaced as we can. So now I can shade in two six and two of my 10. So now I have one, two out of three, four, five, six compared to one, two out of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Clearly two six is more, right? It'd be like right here. That's more than the two 10. Also looking at the number line, here's my two tenths. Two six is all the way up here. When I'm comparing two six to this two tenths, I'm gonna eat the two six. It is more. So all I really need to know is know that six, a single sixth piece. So just looking on this side, this would be a one sixth piece. This would be a one tenth piece. Since the six pieces are more, and I have two of those, and the tenth pieces are smaller, and I have two of those, it's like two quarters is clearly going to be more 
than two dimes because quarters are worth more. So when we have the same numerator, we look at their size. Six represents a number that is more than tenths. Therefore, I have two of something that is already bigger than two of something that is smaller. So then this one would be more. Another way that we can do this is to draw out a number line and label zero, half, and one. And we can just reason where our numbers would go between zero, half, or one. So if I was going to look at two sixths compared to three fifths. So something that I know about six is that if it was halves in six, it would be three out of six would be a half. So if I know that half is three six also, then I know that somewhere over to the left of that would be two six. It doesn't need to be exact. I just need to know that it would be between zero and a half. Three fifths, well, half of five would be two and a half. Or if you had $5, you split it into two equal pieces. That would be two and a half. So that means that three fifths is somewhere larger than a half. And if I look over here, I see here's my half. And then right next to that half line is where I see three fifths. So three fifths is a little bit more than one half. And so I've reasoned it correctly. Over here, I see my two sixths is less than a half. And over to the right, I see that three fifths is more than a half. So now, since I know that three fifths is closer to one than two sixths, it is the larger one. So I'm going to eat the larger of the two. So the alligator mouth eats the three fifths. So two sixths is less than three fifths. Now, another way that I could check this is to always use common denominators. So this is the easiest way. If the denominators are the same, the pieces are the exact same, then we just need to think, well, how many pieces do I have? So I look at six, I look at five, and I think six times five is 30. So I can make equivalent fractions that are in 30ths. So then this would be three fifths in so I know that 6 times 5 would be 30. So I have to make sure that I'm always multiplying by something equal to 1. So that would be 5 over 5. So 2 times 5 is 10. So an equivalent fraction to 2 6 would be 10 thirtieths. And an equivalent fraction to 3 fifths, well, 5 times 6 is 30, and 3 times 6 is is 18. And again, it has to be 6 over 6 because it has to be 1 to be an equivalent fraction. So now I'm comparing 10 thirtieths <coughs> to 18 thirtieths. 